everyone. Hey. Yes, guys, we are so excited. Today marks the 106th Founders Day for Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. And today you are looking at 10 proud members of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. We are so excited. It is our actual day. Most of us are in the DMV and we are semi snowed in, I'll say. <laughs> it's not too much snow, but the roads are kind of tricky. So we are doing a virtual takeover of our celebration of DST. And so I cannot be more excited. I am, I'm going to tell you who's on the line, but then they're going to give you some information of who they are and all good things Delta. So I have Dr. Carmen Rowland, who's going to be talking with us today. Dr. Ashley Griffin, who's going to be talking to us, Avery Jones, Tanil Francis, Jackie Brooks, Dr. Christy Monk, Dr. Denise Moore, Dr. Zipporah Miller, and Ashley Little. We are representing today our 106th Founders Day. And so the first thing that I really want to dive in to talk about is who, where, when, and why. And so basically, what I want you to do is just share a little bit about who you are, when did you pledge, where, and more importantly, why. So we're going to kick this off with Dr. Carmen Rowland. Hi, good morning, everyone. Happy Founders Day. Um, so my name is Carmen Rowland. I pledged at Howard University Alpha Chapter Spring 2004. Um, hi, Lion Sisters. <laughs> um, and I guess why I pledged Delta is because I um, was very passionate about and still am passionate about community service and um, wanting to give back to my community. And that's what I saw my, the, my profiles, the young ladies on Howard's campus doing all throughout my life, the Deltas that um, kind of raised me um, in church and in the community. Um, I just uh, wanted to be um, like them and be with them. And so that's why I, um, pledge Delta Sigma Theta. I love that. And I didn't know you were Alpha Chapter. That's awesome. Yes, I, <laughs> <laughs> I do love that. I really do. Oh my goodness. So next, I'm going to ask Dr. Ashley Griffin to please share your who, where, when, and why. Hi, everybody. Happy Founders Day. I am Dr. Ashley Griffin. I am where I pledge, uh, I, put, I am the Director of Research at the Education Trust, an education civil rights organization here in Washington, D.C. Um, where I pledged is at Georgetown University, New Alpha, in the spring of 1999. And why I pledged is because I knew this woman. Her name was Soror Geneva Bacon. And she was the fiercest, baddest, most professional, amazing woman I'd ever met in my life. And from the time I met her until the time she has been in my life, she has just always espoused the values and everything that it meant to be a woman that was dedicated to life and service and business and professionalism and sisterhood and community. And ever since then, I just wanted to be a Delta. And ever since then, I can't imagine being anything else in my life. So happy Founders Day. I love it. I love it. Thank you. And Miss Avery, please share all your information and welcome. Hi, everyone. My name is Avery Jones. I am a public relations and event management uh, consultant. I pledged at Ada Tall, Virginia Commonwealth University, uh, spring 2011. Um, I actually also did go to GW for grad school. Um, one of the reason I joined the Straight Sorority uh, was because I was committed to community service and committed to advocacy work uh, from a young age. And just growing up in that space has just been something that I have been very passionate about. And going into school and learning uh, previously to that, learning more about Delta Sigma Theta Sorority was something that my heart desired um, and having that sisterhood and service. Um, and I'm just happy to be here with all of you today. Um, be on Facebook Live. Thank you, Dr. Sharon, for having us. Absolutely. Thank you, Avery. Oh, my goodness. And Miss Tanil Francis, I actually had the opportunity to meet Tanil for the very first time just a few weeks ago. And so I was so excited to learn that she was a Sora and had to invite her for the takeover. So Tanil Francis, take it away. Hi, everyone. Happy Founders Day. My name is Tanil Francis, as Dr. Sharon mentioned. And today I am representing my charter shirt, 1980. Um, I was initiated March 21st, 1998, just celebrated 20 years. 
um, on the campus of Bennett College, Omicron Delta chapter um, of Delta Sigma Theta. Um, I joined Delta because every mentor I've ever had in my life in business, um, I'm a tax attorney, so in business, in the corporate world, they've all been deltas. They've all moved with such dignity and grace, and I just wanted to emulate that. And not to mention that they were all about scholarship and service, which are all the things that I stand for and I wanted to um, exemplify in my life. So I chose Delta. I love it. I love it. And uh, I cannot help to say um, we know that Bennett Bell, we are standing with Bennett. And I'm going to get, I have two Bennett Bells actually on yes. today. And so we're going to actually come back around to that because we know until February the 1st, we all, we need everyone to stand with Bennett. So thank you, Tanil, for that. And speaking Absolutely. of Bennett Bell, we have another one that's coming right after Tanil, and that's Miss Jackie Brooks. So, Jackie, take it away. Jackie, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry about that. Great morning, everyone. My name is Jackie Brooks, as Dr. Sharon has stated. Thank you again for having us this morning. I really appreciate it being um, afforded this opportunity to share with my other sorors. I want to say good morning to my um, Neil, to Neil. Great morning to Neil. <laughs> So yes, we are Minute Bells and we do it well. I am super excited that I am on this platform with my other sorors. Um, again, happy Founders Day to each and every one of you. I too pledged at Bennett College in Greensboro, North Carolina, December the 7th, 1995. And I am a part of the 58 RACs, the 58 reanimated characters. And the reason I cho chose Delta is because um, growing up, I had a mentor, a Sunday school teacher, Miss Patricia Bradford, who exemplified everything that a Delta is. She is a woman of God. She's a servant leader. She stands on her faith and community service. And that is one of the things that is really dear to my heart is the community service and serving others. So that is one of the reasons that I um, chose Delta and I am a a member of Delta for a lifetime commitment. I, I'm glad that I took this oath and I'm glad that Delta um, chose me as well. You're muted. You're muted, Dr. Sharon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jackie. So next we have Dr. Christy Monk. She's gonna share. Dr. Christy, welcome. Take it away. Welcome. Good morning. Happy Founders Day. So I am Dr. Christy Monk. I am a leadership and development coach. Um, I pledged Delta Spring of 2011, 11, so Southwest Dallas County alumni. Um, the reason why I pledged and chose Delta, well, first of all, my best friend was a Delta, of course, and um, I just love the work that she did in Delta. And one of the things that I'm really, really passionate about is service. And because that was just a part of my passion, a part of who I am, I knew I wanted to be a Delta. So I'm very uh, grateful and happy to be a part of my sister. So I, lo I love the sisterhood. Thank you, Dr. Christy. And next, we're going to be introduced to Dr. Denise Moore. Take it away, Dr. Denise. Good morning. Good morning. Again, happy Founders Day to all the sorors. Again, I'm Dr. Denise. I am the founder of the Own Your Amazing Movement. I pledged spring 93 at the University of North Carolina in Greensboro, Omicron Ada. <laughs> so the reason why I pledged Delta, like everyone says, the whole thing about sisterhood and service. I am the youngest of five siblings. I have three sisters. So I wanted more sisters. <laughs> and also I understood service, giving back to, giving back to the community and, and what that meant for me and my family. We've always been giving, always been a part of stuff. So it was just a natural thing for me to want to be a part of a, an amazing organization like Dr. Sigma Theta. Thank you, Dr. Denise. <laughs> and next we have a longtime friend and colleague, former colleague, Dr. Sephora Miller. Sephora, are you muted? Good morning. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am Dr. Zipporah Miller, and um, I am a passionate educator. 
and um, I pledged in spring of 2008 with the Prince George's County Alumni Chapter. And so you say, why? Well, why? my why was because I am passionate about, about service. I'm passionate about um, serving the community, but more importantly, serving, um, serving children or serving those who are not able to have for themselves. But another reason um, in my why is as an educator, I got to meet so many Deltas. And um, what I learned, I didn't know there were Deltas at first, but you know, what I learned is they, they give it 150% in everything that they do. And I would watch and admire several um, people in the field of education, Dr. Sharon being one of them. I remember meeting her at Prince George's Community College and everything they did, they were passionate about. And as it turned out, I would find out later, yeah, she's a Delta and she's a Delta all the more reason for me to say, I want to join this illustrious sisterhood. I love that, Zephora. I actually remember when we met at Prince George's Community College. <laughs> I remember that, oh my goodness. And my good buddy that I recently just met is Miss Ashley Little, all the way from Tennessee. Take it away, Ashley. Happy Founders Day to Awards. <laughs> my name is Ashley Little. I pledged at North Carolina a and State University in Greensboro, North Carolina, Alpha Mu Spring 07. Why I joined uh, DSP is because I've had role models and family members in my life who also played a major part. And I'm very passionate about scholarship and community service and breaking barriers, barriers and silencing the norm. So that's why I joined Del Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I love it. Thank you, Ashley. And yes. so, <laughs> absolutely. And so, guys, I am a member of Spring 90 Gamma Phi Chapter at Winston Salem State University. I love my Gamma Phi family, Gamma Phi forever. And, you know, my story is a little different because growing up, all of my neighbors, um, my teachers, they were actually a part of another sorority. And that was my first introduction to sororities. I wasn't familiar, I didn't have anyone in my family that was in a sorority or fraternity. And so um, I went to all of these events with my best friend whose mother was a part of this sorority as well, this other sorority. And so I would grow up going to these events. And so when I went to Winston-Salem State University as a freshman, of course, I began to look around. And what do you know? These ladies of Gamma Phi Chapter, of Delta Sigma Theta, absolutely stole my heart. I was like, wow, I, I was not familiar, but I became familiar when I stepped on the campus at Winston-Salem State University. So I applaud my big sisters of Gamma Phi Chapter for exemplifying everything of Delta because truly when I stepped on campus, I was not looking for Delta. But when I saw it, I knew that's what I needed to be a part of. So I'm just excited such as you are in really celebrating this 106 years um, of this wonderful sorority. So guys, we're gonna talk a little bit now, and so uh, we're gonna jump in. So I don't think I'm gonna call you much. We're just gonna jump in and talk about the significance of our lines, our line names, how many was on your line? Um, and you know, if you play at spring or fall, or you know, I think we only have spring and fall. I was a spring 90 baby. And so I really want to delve into that significance. And actually, I'm going to ask Dr. Roland to start first because you were in AfroTap, and I think the only one here. And that, to me, because when I knew I was coming to Washington, D.C. area, I was like, oh, my God, I've got to find myself on the campus of Howard University where we were born. And so how was it pledging AfroTap, Dr. Roland? Oh, wow. Well, thank you. Um, it was awesome. <laughs> I mean, to be, you know, to think about our founders um, and that they walked the campus and um, learning about all that they had to do to start Delta and just actually just have be the, in that, be on campus, be a part of that chapter um, was very significant. And uh, pledging with my line sisters, we um, were spring 04, as I said, um, fastidious 48 was is the name of our line i'm the number 29 on that line so high 29s out there <laughs> um uh but we you know with our all the alumni and our big sisters and pro fights 
um, coming back, learning the songs, the circle songs, and doing those at homecoming and graduations. And, you know, anytime we get together, it's just awesome being around Fortitude, singing around Fortitude. You just really feel like that sense of um, history. And it, it, you know, it's a, it's a, it was a great honor. I still feel indebted, you know, 15 years, soon to be 15 years later, um, to my big sister for seeing something in me and selecting me to be a part um, of something so great and precious as our sorority. And I love school. it. And what, and what was your line's name? My, our line's name was Fastidious 48, and oh. my line name is Sense and Sensibility. Oh, wow. Okay. But apparently, everybody says, fix me. I said, okay. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> you know, and guys, I tell you, the, the naming of the line names for um, those of us who, you know, did that is really because I, to this day, I still don't know why my line name is what it is. But maybe I have to consult with my big sisters to really find it out. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> right. <laughs> but please, so actually, I want to go to Dr. Monk. Please share your experience um, as the entry into this wonderful sisterhood. It was interesting to say the least. So my line, well, our line was called Premier, Detra Premier Attraction, Delayed But Not Denied. Wow. There were 78 wow. of us. Um, so it was the first line for Southwest Dallas um, County alumni. So that's why the line was so large. My name is Get Christy Love because it was the movie thing and I'm number 59. Okay. And it was a lot of work because I know that you think in college, oh, well, they had so much fun. They did this, they did that. Oh my gosh. It was like another job. <laughs> but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it because it was just like to see so many women coming together to build this community so we built it and so now just to see they had their second line I believe it was last year it, it's, it's amazing because now my sisters are actually those leaders so it's and, and the unfortunate part for me is as soon as I pledged I moved to DC so I didn't get to really interact and to be a part of it but I am still a part of it because um, I go back for all of our anniversaries so it's, it's been a good experience so I'm number 59 hey 59s Wow, that is exciting. 78. And so, and, and that was what year? Uh -uh. Spring, spring 2011. Okay, if someone can, okay, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. And so, actually, I want to go over to Dr. Miller because you mentioned it as well. Because um, people, just like Dr. Monk said, it's a lot of work when you go grad. You're an adult, you're working, you're doing all these other things, and then throwing on top of trying to become a member of a wonderful sorority such as Delta. So, talk about that, Dr. Miller. In the Prince George's County alumni, alumni chapter um, here in Prince George's County, Maryland. And it was in the spring of 2008. And I, um, at the time, um, I was in a supervisory position. And I remember getting off work and going straight to the um, sessions. And we were there sometimes till 11, 12 o'clock. Then when you got home, you still had work to do. So that was, it was a blur. <laughs> it, was, it was a blur. And I know sometimes people who knew me, who, are, who are always knew that I was always full of energy, towards the end, they would say, are you okay? Do you need to go see a doctor? You know, you seem a little tired. And I was like, no, 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 I'm good. <laughs> you know, um, so it, it, was, it was a lot of work. Um, a lot of work learning about the sisterhood, learning about, you know, our founders, but it was amazing. It was great. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, we had a line of 122. We were the rightfully determined 122. And my line number is number 98. So needless to say, I can barely find items with my line number, but, um, um, my line number is um, 98, and our another good thing about having grad chapter is our line is pretty much in the D D.C. metropolitan area. So every year during Founders Day, we get together, whether it's brunch, you know, the first time we got together, we got together at um, Fortitude, and that was amazing, you know. Um, 
And today we were supposed to go out um, later this evening, but the snow is going to deter us. So, uh, and we get together during um, our anniversary time. So that's always a good thing um, to have pretty much in the area. I love it. Thank you so much. Dr. Griffin, can you share your experience with your line? Oh, so there are only seven of us. Um, so we're much smaller than all of these other amazing lines. New Alpha Chapter, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, Georgetown and American Core Chapter, which allowed us to cross across campuses and do a lot of great work on two different campuses, had two very different groups of women. Uh, they are my sisters for life. Uh, we were going on 20 years this year. Um, our line is name is the Little Rascals. So we'll let that do whatever it do. <laughs> that is our line name. My line name, love it or leave it, is bench warmer. We'll also let that do. <laughs> um, it says a lot about my process and what it was like and what we were like and the, the joy and fun we had and learning each other and learning the sorority and all the fun that goes along with that um, up until the spring of 99. Uh, my number, I'm the deuce of our line, so we say deuces are wild because you never know quite what you're going to get, and I think I probably fit that very well. I love all the twos in the world, <laughs> um, so I got to go second earlier. I was happy with that, Sharon. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate that, but yeah, my line sister, we were supposed to meet today. We are, we roll tight, so you see one of us, where most of us are in this area, you usually see all of us to this day, um, so kids' birthday parties, we're all deep. Um, <laughs> Christmas, we try to see each other every year. We're going on an anniversary trip together and we're just a tight group. Like I can't imagine, I don't have any sisters. I'm the only girl of my family. And so all nephews, all brothers. And so they are my, they're my sissies. I love them to death and um, all different personalities, but couldn't imagine this world without, without my line sisters. I love that, Ashley. Thank you. Oh my God. And Miss Avery Jones, please share your line experience with us. Yeah, so my, my line uh, name is Danelle Ripper, and I had a total of 16 uh, sisters on our line. Um, we're called the Minds of the Misconstructed, so uh, that's where we are. And we're a very close, tight-knit group. Um, we're all over the country, but when it comes to weddings or celebrations, it's like, okay, 15 out of 16 of us are going to be there, but all 16 of us are going to be there in some side of way. Um, but it was just a great experience uh, going through our own process and, and getting to know each other um, and building that sisterhood um, with over eight years now almost and just loving on each other and just being in that that connected bond with them um, has just been a blessing uh, to them. So hi to all of my sorority sisters that are, that are watching, all of my sisters. Awesome, thank you. And right down the road, our neighbors from what's the same state was Bennett College and ANT. So we're gonna hear from ANT first, Alpha Mu chapter, which I know very well, and then we're gonna go to the uh, opulent Omicron Delta chapter. So let's hear from Alpha Mu, Ashley Little. Awesome, hi, from Spring 07 Alpha Mu, I'm number 55, my line name is Made Attraction. Love my line sisters. We're coming up on our 15 years soon. So, I mean, we just have an awesome bond. We're all, we're all doing great throughout the world. And we just have a nice fun when we get together. It's just like we pledged again, you know, just like the memories that we're bringing back. And my chapter after Mute, Mute has always been at the top. We always ran the yard, high GPA. We were very involved. And I have the awesome, some awesome big sisters that were always role models for us. And we just continue to keep the legacy going. So, Spring 07 Alpha Mu. <laughs> Thank you, Alpha Mu. We're going to go to yes. our Bennett sisters, Tanil and then Jackie. Hey, everyone. Um, so I was on, um, again, I'm from the Omicron Delta chapter, Bennett College. Uh, my line was Spring 98. We were 28 against all odds. Um, if anybody knows anything about Bennett College, it is a small school, a small campus. We're in a very tight radius. So you can imagine what 28 against all odds stands for. Um, it was quite a challenge to um, do what we needed to do and keep that um, under wraps, we'll say that, um, and try to keep the line a surprise. So we uh, had some major challenges um, moving around Bennett College to make sure that the day that we came out to the campus, it was a surprise for the campus. So we were 28 against all odds. I'm number eight, the eight ball. 
Um, my line name is Fortune 500, and that kind of speaks for itself. But I will say that Bennett being so small, um, like my Alpha Mu sister, Omicron Delta definitely ran the yard. Um, I was on a line full of SGA officers. I was SGA president at the time. We had all the class presidents. Uh, we had the highest GPA. So look, it speaks for itself. But um, we did what we had to do. We got it done. We just celebrated 20 years. And um, we are all over. But we definitely are only a phone call away. And um, we definitely stay connected. And I love my line sisters. Um, I love my big sisters. Jackie, who's next, is uh, 495. She's my pro fight. So um, I'll let her take it away because 58 RACs definitely set the standard for 28 ODDs. Thank you, Tanil. Absolutely. Um, yes, I am a part of Bennett College Omicron Delta Fall 95, and we were the 58 RACs reanimated characters. I was number 33. Um, my line name was Daffy Duck. Um, we, um, again, we are very close. We're still close. Um, I get up with my line sisters as much as possible. We have different group chats that we're in. Um, any, uh, during the holidays, we definitely get together. We get together throughout the year, actually. Um, whenever there's football games, if I, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan, so I travel to Dallas a lot. So I meet up with my line sisters that are out in Dallas and vice versa. It's just wherever we are, we connect. And, um, I think being that we are, we, we were the largest line from Omicron Delta, so we knew we had to set a standard because it was like, okay, 58 of you guys. But we, again, we're, we're so close-knit. I mean, like Tanil said, we, we stay connected wherever we go. Whenever we go out of town, like when we, we'll get a phone call, hey, I'm coming to your area, what are you doing? Or we always try to connect wherever we go. Um, one of the things that... Um, my line we experienced where one of my line sisters passed um, back in, I think it was three years ago, Michelle Gilliard, our number 30, um, 13. So that, our line was already close, but I think that losing a sister definitely brought us much closer together. So it's like now, every time we come, anybody comes into the town, we always try to connect. And then like even on um, our, um, um, on December the 7th, we all try to get together wherever we are. and We'll just take pictures or we FaceTime in to where every, everyone is. So we just try to definitely stay connected because, um, again, like losing a line sister is definitely devastating, but it definitely brought us much closer. So I definitely enjoyed my experience at Bennett. We had some wonderful experiences. Um, we did run the yard as well, like Tanil said. We, we, um, my line sister, um, Jasmine, she was Miss Bennett. Um, my other line sister, Amanda, she was also um, SGA president. So our line, basically, we ran the yard, like Tanil said. And, um, and to this day, I think that's all we do. <laughs> the Deltas definitely run the yard. <laughs> Absolutely. And now, Dr. Denise, and I think you were at UNCG, which of course is right around the corner again, Greensboro, um, right from ANT and right from Bennett as well. So Dr. Denise, take it away. Sure. Again, I pledged Spring 93, Omicron Ada at the University of North Carolina in Greensboro. It was 13 of us. And so we were called Friday the 13th. <laughs> and so I was number 10. <laughs> and it was an awesome experience. Two of my live sisters live here in the DMV but most of them are still in North Carolina and Charlotte, Greensboro area. But like Jackie, we lost one of our line sisters shortly after we pledged. Uh, she, was, she was killed in a car accident in August, right after we pledged in that spring. So it was very devastating for us. Tanja Adam, you know, and so we have the, the, the privilege, I say the privilege of doing her a mega, mega ceremony. So we had just crossed. And months late, a couple of months later, we had to do her a mega, mega ceremony. And some of the big sisters in our chat were like, no, we're doing it. We was like, no, she was our sister. And so we're going to learn to do this thing. And we did it. And I'm so happy about that. We started a scholarship in her honor that is still going on on campus today. So again, her name was Tanja Adams. She's, she's gone, but never forgotten. <laughs> and so just because of that, you know, that experience, you know, having to deal with um, 
not just death, definitely brought my line closer together. And so um, we're close, we keep in touch with one another. And so I just believe the bond would never be gone. <laughs> Wow, thank you. And I hope we got everybody with the lines. Um, my line's name was Wild Kingdom, and let me tell you, we were wild. <laughs> oh my goodness, we were wild. I was number four, and I love my number fours. And I think there's just an attachment to the number that we were assigned. And I know most chapters, it was by height. Let me put up. Okay, I'm sorry about that. And so, guys, what I now want to talk about is because a lot of you have talked about uh, closeness of lines. And we know that that is not always the case, um, that you have some lines that come together and some that do not. Um, and so there were 12 of us on our line, and we have maybe about five that always, no matter what, will come together, and then a few that do not, for various reasons, um, various reasons throughout the years, and you respect those boundaries. But I want us to talk a little bit about when you do, and if you do, have a line, sisters, that's not really connected. How do you move forward with trying to um, respect those boundaries, but making sure that at least a connection is there anyone can jump in with if you have a suggestion for that hey dr jackie this is tenille um i'll jump in because my line just celebrated our 20th and um we were reaching out to sorors or my line sisters that kind of we hadn't talked to in a while and one of the things we talked about was um just trying to keep them connected, keep the flow of information going, trying to find them. Um, there's somebody that knows somebody. You have some line sisters that really just want to step back. And like you said, we respect that, but at the same time, we don't um, want them to feel excluded because they step back and give them that option and learn to respect their space. I know as an undergrad, um, you kind of you're, you're territorial about your line sisters and you're territorial about Delta and you want everybody to walk to the same beat and you want everybody to do the same thing and you kind of get a little attitude when your line sisters or your chapter members aren't falling in line and so as we learn to grow and mature we just felt like you know what some people you just have to love them from afar and understand that we are still bonded but and, and keep them included. And one of my line sisters actually, although she didn't fully participate, loved the fact that she had the option to and always kept that information flowing. And so we started like a group me and a, a, um, a listserv. So we use that to actually communicate. And you could choose to jump in or not jump in, but they still feel connected. And, and I felt like that was important because for a while I felt like you don't want to be a part, well then go ahead, you know, about your way and we'll continue the business of Delta. And then you got to step back and check your spirit and know that that's not the Delta way, but continue to try to embrace them and let them know that they're still loved. So we took that approach and I learned a good lesson 20 years later. I, I love that because that's exactly what we do. We have the group me, we have a Facebook group, um, and we're constantly searching because we actually have one line sister that we've not heard from since we pledged. And uh, we have been diligently seeking, and that was spring 1990. Um, and so Cynthia, if you're out there listening, uh, we definitely want to reconnect with you just to say hi. Uh, because I think it's important. We go through that bond and you do, you, you feel connected to these ladies. And so you do care about their surroundings. So anyone else, any other suggestions to making connections to maybe uh, Lion Sisters that are not in your immediate circle? I'll, I'll jump in. Um, we had a line of 122 and big props to our big sisters who uh, divided us, not um, for division, but per se, so we can get to know each other so that we don't get anybody lost in the um, crowd. So they divided us into groups of 10. So the 90s were one group, get to know one another. You know, we still got to know our other line sisters, but what that did was now that we are, um, 10 years in, there are some line sisters and everybody connects in a different way who could have gotten lost. But amongst the 10, we'll say, hey, have you heard from so-and-so? Or so-and-so didn't come to this event and we are able to reach out to them. 
sometimes they don't reach back out, but we always talk to each other and say, hey, let's at least reach out to them and see how they're doing. And we might send a text and say, how are you doing? How are you doing? And if they don't, don't respond, it's okay. We just want them to know that we care. We want to know how you're doing. And when they're ready, they'll reach back out to us. Awesome. And, you know, and just in passing in years, I hear a lot of people say, you know, you don't have to be a part of, of sorority to, to do public service. You don't have to be a part of a sorority to do this or that. And my response is you absolutely do not have to be a part of a sorority to, to do um, the sisterhood and to do the uh, scholarship and to do the public service that we do. But membership has its privileges. And I often say that because it's just like working out. We can work out alone, we can work out at home, but sometimes we get a membership at a gym, correct? <laughs> and so, and you don't have those same privileges if you were doing it alone. And so I'm now speaking to those individuals to that, you know, really say that it, it's not all of that. We each have our own whys, which we shared individually in the beginning of why we chose Delta to do the work that we're doing. We believe in uh, what uh, we vowed to do, our oath. We took that oath and we take it very passionately and very seriously. And so now I want to move forward to how we are living that spirit now that we are graduate. After years after we've played, I don't think anyone here is um, less than five years. And so it's still real. And sometimes you may not be as active as you were in the beginning or there are different spells because I know I just finished my doctorate in 2017 and for three years I was not as active as I uh, was in the past. So now I want to talk about how do you keep that alive even now, years after you've initiated into Dr. Sigma Delta? And can I start with you? Uh, Dr. Rowland, let's see. So, oh, I got you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, after I pledged, I went to grad school in Ann Arbor, um, and so I joined the Ann Arbor alumni chapter probably two or three years into my PhD program at University of Michigan, and um, so I had to first, you know, get there and, and get the business of doctorate, <laughs> my doctorate education straight. Uh, but um, when I got there, uh, the Sorors uh, in the Midwest at uh, Ann Arbor Alumni Chapter took me in. Um, I got involved with the youth programs, the Delta Gyms, and political awareness and involvement, and really um, was able to just serve and be a part of those committees. And then uh, moved here to the D.C. area, back to the D.C. area after I finished um, when I took a job at Howard University and uh, joined the Montgomery County Alumni Chapter, where I, one of my pro fights actually was instrumental in me joining the chapter. But then not only joining the chapter, she told the president at the time, um, Sora Lorna Ford, um, that I would be a great uh, committee chair for political awareness and involvement. So <laughs> I went from just kind of trying to attend chapter meetings to actually leading a committee. And that was in the time of Maryland, we had the gubernatorial candidates for, or can, uh, gubernatorial candidates with, uh, with um, uh, our current governor. And um, I think Anthony Brown uh, was running for governor at that time. We had, uh, I would do voter education, voter registration drives all around Montgomery County, um, downtown Silver Spring and Aspen Hill area to try to register voters and um, giving back that way. And then that was my main instrumental um, community service. And I've always been passionate about social action, um, but being the chair of those committees and putting together programs with the other social action committees in Montgomery County alumni chapter at the time, was very instrumental and very critical. Uh, I learned a lot uh, about politics, about the way laws work, you know, this kind of refresher from, you know, your civics education in high school. Um, and then uh, recently, uh, this past year, I was the chair of the health and um, physical health, uh, physical and mental health um, committee. And that really, uh, again, was another area that I've been passionate about. And um, <laughs> not that I always go to the gym, but I always think about it and being healthy. <laughs> and so being the chair of the committee was kind of like, okay, if I, you know, I got to kind of walk the walk if I'm talking the talk. 
And so doing things with the Go Red um, for Health, with the American Heart Association, um, other health fairs that we do. One of the store was very instrumental in um, putting together a sickle cell blood drive, uh, a blood drive for sickle cell um, to raise awareness for that and to get donors for, for um, kids who have sickle cell anemia. Um, so anyways, I, I guess I'm giving all these examples, but really, um, um, like I believe, and then even outside of Delta, Delta taught me so much about um, social action that I you know, went on to join the Montgomery County Commission for Women and sit on some boards as advocates for children with um, physical disabilities and mental disabilities. And so it really does come full circle when you think about the reasons why you pledged for me almost 15 years ago um, this March and then what really uh, what my life has been about since I pledged. And it just, you know, it's, it's just really a great thing. And I'm so happy to be on the, the show with all of you. Um, to talk about these things. Great. Thank you. And I've got to give a shout out to Dr. Griffin and Dr. Rowland. They are part of me pledging twice, as I say. <laughs> <laughs> they were both my professors um, in my doctoral program at Howard University. And yes, that was a pledging process. And so I just want to say um, a shout out to you guys and thank you. I made it. <laughs> and because of your thoughtfulness and hard work. So I just wanted to give you that shout out. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Hey guys so who else is making that connection and 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 doing something as a graduate tour that's keeping connected anyone can jump in okay i'm you know why you get together let me tell you <laughs> i just joined the tri-county maryland chapter and so first of all i want to give out a shout out to all the chapters that i was a part of because when i relocated from North Carolina to Maryland, I joined FWAC, Fort Washington Alumni Chapter, and was there for over 15 years. So a shout out to them. Um, and as I said, once I uh, started my doctoral program, I sort of went low key so I can focus. And uh, once I finished that and, and recuperated from that process, I joined Tri-County Maryland Chapter, uh, a very small chapter right now, which I love. And just like you, Dr. Rowland, I joined and ended up chairing the scholarship committee, <laughs> which I'm doing now. So I tell you, one thing about Delta, they will put you to work. Um, so you don't think you can just come and sit and just be a part. You will be leading if, if you allow that. So um, anyone else, how, what is your connection now as a graduate chapter member? So, I'll go. Um, so now I took a hiatus, right? I went to graduate school much like yourself and Dr. Carmen um, took a long hiatus, was just tired. I was a, a, a president of a small chapter in undergrad, which meant a lot of doing everything. Went to graduate school, took a break. Um, but my job and career in educational civil rights is always dedicated and committed to the vision and mission of Delta. Um, it is at my core, it is my passion, and so that has always been there. And then I had some students at Howard as they were going through doctoral programs who kept saying, Dr. Griffin, we know you're a soror, why are you not in a chapter right now? We know you need to be back in a chapter, why are you not in a chapter right now? So my students reclaimed me to Prince George's County Alumni chapter four years ago. <laughs> and since then, I have been working with the Physical Health, Physical, Physical Mental Health Committee. Um, I travel a ton for work, so most of the time, I try to do the events that are community service forward and focused. So anything from collecting toys, um, I help with the, 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 the drive for Christmas, I help with the food drive for Thanksgiving, um, Alzheimer's walks, anything that really feels like I can reconnect with the community is where I best feel like I serve the chapter. Um, I feel like I get a lot, a lot of opportunity to do some social action things and hopefully we'll sit in some school board meetings, which I think I can really help move and push and help folks understand where to go. But most of my time at this point has really been spent trying to reacclimate toward the chapter, but also just reacclimate toward really being a part of the community that I, I live in, quite frankly. I'm only here one week out of the month, but that I live in. <laughs> and really like just doing great community service. And one of the things I'm going to say is like coming back and being reminded of what a great, powerful sisterhood we are and how amazing you all are. It is one of the really powerful moments in how much we have to give. Like, I think I forgot how much I had to give above and beyond what I could give until I was reconnected with all, all the soul worthy chapter.
Dr. Porter, I think you're on mute. Thank you. <laughs> yes, so we're looking for someone else and I thought I saw Jackie ready to pop in. Oh, well, I am a member of Federal City Alumni Chapter and I um, actually, I consider myself a floater in a sense when it comes to serving. I pretty much, if, if a SORA says, Jackie, we need help with this, Jackie, we need help with that, then I help. So I'm not one that just go and sign up for whatever committee. I'm one that just, I'm there at, at will. If you need help, I'm there. So I've helped with fundraising. I've helped with the gyms. I've helped with social action. And I really like social action. And I, I, I think because of what it stands for and what we do, with social action, as well as with the gyms. I love being able to impact young people's lives, especially young women, especially being that I'm a product of a woman's college. I think that I have a lot to give to the gyms. And so I really um, connect in those areas. But again, I consider myself a floater. Anytime they say, Jackie, we need something. But my sister, who's also a Sora, she is the like social B of, of Delta. So they would be like, Jackie, Tiffany, come do this. Tiffany, come do that. And so then being that my sister and I, we live together. So she'd be like, well, you, you're going to. And I'm like, no, I didn't sign up for it. <laughs> but I think I'm more of the floater. I help wherever it's needed. And um, I really enjoy being a part of Federal City. Um, one of the things when I, um, the store of, a letter. One of the biggest things she said to myself was the on, uh, the only reason I would write. She said I would write the letter. Yes, she said, but on one condition, you have to be active. And so I was like, okay, I can do that. She said, no, I'm serious. You have to be active. And I have held that true to my heart um, from from being active. I, I I just hate that I didn't um, do the. Um, uh, what you call it? Uh, life membership. Yes. I hate that I didn't do life membership when right. it was an opportunity, but I wasn't working at that time. So I was like, oh, well, but I made sure that I remain active and I'm, I'm active to this day with Federal City. And I, I love it. I love the bond that I have with Federal City. Um, I've had stories from Prince George's as well as from Fort Washington to say, well, why don't you come to our chapter? And I'm like, well, you know, I love the sisterhood and the camaraderie that I have with Federal City. Now, granted, PG alumni is around the corner and Fort Washington is not too far, <laughs> but I do enjoy going into the city and connecting with the Soros in the, in the city. So. And, you know, I think that's an advantage that we have in the DMV area. There are so many local chapters um, in this area. So um, that's a, good, a great thing. And we know that as graduate soars, we have the opportunity to pay dues with whichever chapter we see fit. So that's definitely an advantage. Um, that's similar to me, like going all the way to Calvert County, Prince Frederick, and, and Charles County when I live right here in Prince George's County. But uh, like you, I actually, well, like I wanted to meet new soars because I'm like, I've been a part of FWAC for years now. So it's a new start, so definitely. So any other connections? We have about 12 more minutes, so we definitely wanna get everyone in. Any more connections um, about how you are living that sisterhood scholarship and service um, through now as a graduate chapter? Um, hey, Dr. Jackie, it's Tennille <laughs> again. Hey, everybody. But um, I am a member of North Arundel Alumni Cha North Arundel County Alumni Chapter, which is a small chapter in Anne Arundel County. Um, I used to live up there, and then when I moved to PG County, I just kept my membership. It was a small chapter, um, and I was able to actually do a lot of the things that I wanted to do. In fact, share my gifts where I know my talents could be utilized. I'm the treasurer of that chapter. I serve in a bunch of finance capacities there, so um, that's how I stay connected. But I will dr bring that back home to the Bennett issue, if I could put a plug in right here. Um, I've always been active with Delta, um, been active with Bennett, but not as active with Bennett as I should have been, which is my first sorority, I will say. 
Um, and so using my, my gifts to fundraise and, and my financial talents, um, at the moment, trying to utilize those to really help my alma mater, which if the listening audience does not know, Bennett College is one of only two women's institutions dedicated to educating women of color. And at the moment, Bennett is definitely in peril. And um, we're on the brink of losing our accreditation strictly due to um, financial issues. Um, we are in the fight of our lives at the moment, and we're in a campaign to raise $5 million. We have about 20 days left um, to achieve that goal. So I'm asking all the listeners out there, um, I'm um, so already. Please share our story. You can donate. Um, Stand with Bennett Cash App. Stand with Bennett. Go to www.bennett.edu um, to donate. But I say all that to say that my leadership in North Arundel Alumni Chapter and doing the work there prepared me for this moment to help my alma mater um, in this mission and in this fight. So Delta. Um, has really blessed me and given me the opportunity to do some great things in other aspects. So I know we focus on the work of Delta all the time, but I think Delta definitely is that foundation for us to do greater things and greater good for other aspects of our lives. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you for the platform. Sorry, everybody, for the shameless plug. No, but absolutely. We want out there. everyone to stand with Bennett. So thank yes. you, Neil, for that. And I'm so excited to see that Miss Tiffany, sorry, Tiffany has joined us. So Tiffany, please share who you are, where you pledge, when you pledge, and how you're connected to Delta um, right now. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tiffany Brooks. I pledge at Ohio University, um, Epsilon Iota Chapter Spring 2001. I'm number five of six. We were the six that only survived. <laughs> and um, I have, so being a part of multiple graduate chapters, I was a part of um, Columbus Alumni Chapter in Ohio. And then when I moved back home, I joined DC Alumni Chapter. But in all honesty, it, that felt like the founders was up in there. It was just an older chapter. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I um I moved over to Federal City Alumni Chapter and that's where I've been um ever since I've I've came back home. Awesome. Thank you so much. I love it. And I tell you, you know, it's it's so funny that you mentioned that. Um, but that speaks to making sure that our young alumni come apart when you graduate from undergraduate, you've got to join a graduate chapter because you will have that. And it really takes all of us. It takes the experience, all, it takes our Delta Deers, as well as the young alumni to come and make the chapter great. So um, that speaks to that. Okay, we have Dr. Lees, Ashley Little, uh, who else have not, uh, Avery, come on guys, how are you connected now as a graduate soror? I'll, I'll go. Um... I definitely took a little bit of a hiatus. I was in graduate, graduate school up until 2015, and um, I re rejoined Prince George's County Alumni Chapter um, about two years ago, but it's been in and out. I've been a, I've been a floater, um, but of course the spirit with Delta is always there. Um, I'm still connected via email and there whenever uh, a person is needed. Um, and I'm, I look forward in this 2019 year to fully come back um, and be heavily involved uh, this year. Um, I, I will say I, my, my line sister, Natasha Williams, is, is from New York, but she constantly stays in contact uh, with me. Like, when are, you, when are you going back? And I'm like, I'm getting back. I'm getting back involved. Um, and just being more uh, in front and in person uh, with everyone uh, in the chapter. Uh, so that is the, my big goal um, in 2019, uh, and getting back and focused into the chapter. Thank you. What about you, Dr. Denise? So when I graduated from UNCG, I moved here to DC to 10 Howard University. And so when I first moved to the area, I was a part of the Montgomery County alumni chapter. But like everybody says, you know, grad school got in the way. <laughs> and so I wasn't able to be as committed as I wanted to be. But once I started working, you know, life settled down a little bit, I was a part of the DC alumni chapter. 
for a little while. <laughs> and then life happened. I started a business. And then I also went back to school, get my PhD. And so I did attend the Howard County alumni chapter for, for a couple of times. So um, like Avery, I want to get back committed to really being a part. This, this gathering this morning just really helped to reignite in me the passion and the, the, the motivation to reconnect with Delta Sigma Theta. I believe the work that I do, I'm a speech pathologist, you know, by trade. Um, but I have been, been committed to making sure that scholarship and service has always been a part of my life. But I see now I need to get reconnected back to Delta. So I am committed to get, you know, join back in this year as well and get to me committed to a chapter. I just need to decide which one. <laughs> I'm in Prince George's County, but I'm near Howard County, you know. So DC alumni was always, you know, good to me as well. So just need to find out which one is going to be the best fit for me now. So. I love it. Thank you. And Miss Ashley, what are you doing in Tennessee? <laughs> yes. So I've been a floater as well, but my career has moved me to different places. So I was in Virginia Beach alumni, very involved. Now I'm in Nashville. So I do things with both chapters, Nashville Metro and Nashville alumni. Trying to figure out which one I am going to actually be a part of, be more committed to. But um, I do a lot of things with them, very involved in the community the Urban League, with different conferences here, and um, it's just been awesome. I'm going to do some things with them today um, at the church as well, so I um, feel very involved being connected and making those relationships and knowing that I can travel anywhere in the world and I got a sister that has my back. Absolutely, and you know, you said it, anywhere in the world, and that is so powerful. And so guys, in our last few minutes, we're just going to give your last um, comment um, what you have to say, whether it's about Delta in general, general or it's uh, your line sister, your chapter. So just think about that last message that you want to give on this 106 founder day that we are celebrating our illustrious sorority. And I'm grateful. And someone said, you know, not only that I chose Delta, but that Delta chose me. Someone said that and I never looked at it that way. So I am grateful for that because not everyone gets chosen. <laughs> and so that is a wonderful thing. So Dr. Ashley, if we can start with you, any lasting message that you want to leave on this 106 Founders Day? Did you just say me? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so first, I think I just want to give a shout out to my passed away line sister, Janelle Schilling for Coletta. Um, so just want to shout her out. Her son turned 18 this weekend, so just want to shout them out really quickly. Um, I think my last thought and message is just I feel grateful. I feel blessed to have been a part of th this amazing group of women for 20 years of my life. I don't know who I'd be or how successful I would be without the foundational skills, knowledge, commitment to community that all of you help keep alive in my life and committed to and grounded to. And then I'm just glad to be a part of this conversation. Like all of these moments when you come back into sisterhood, really revitalize, re-engage and recommit you to what you already do and who you already are. And so it's almost like church sometimes. But <laughs> I just say like I just feel blessed and grateful to be a part of this space. And I hope that more people understand that like all these powerful women in the world running things, running the, the yard of the world, if you will, have wonderful letters and wonderful commitment and history behind them. And so that would be my parting word. I love it. Thank you. And Avery Jones, we're going to go to you next. Yes. Uh, so I would love to give a shout out to three uh, mentors and, and, and women in particular. Uh, my best friend, Jamila Meekins, um, two of my inspirational uh, mentors, uh, Miss Kelly Lemon and Miss Lisa Butler McDougall for inspiring me to uh, get involved in Delta Sigma Theta sorority. Um, this sisterhood is a commitment. It is a lifetime commitment. Um, and uh, just the, the bond in which uh, this 106 year, uh, bringing us all together again in this format. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sharon, um, and happy Founders Day to all of you. Thank you. And Ms. Tennille Francis, we're gonna go to you next. Yep, um, thanks Dr. Sharon for having me again. Um, it's always wonderful to um, have an opportunity to uh, be on your platform. But I want to give a couple shout outs. The first one is to um, a, a woman who actually brought me to Delta Land. Her name is Glenda Brewington. She gave me my first internship, Sight Unseen. Um, very powerful woman in the industry, um, in corporate America, I'm sorry. And so I want to thank her 
for that and being that example. Um, second, I want to give a huge shout out to my line sisters, 28 Against All Odds. I love you guys to life, not to death. Um, and then um, to the ladies of the Omicron Delta chapter, past and mo and most significantly, the present. Um, ladies, stay strong. We're going to get through whatever it is that we're going through. Um, Delta women are committed. They're strong. Um, this organization was built to face adversity, and we can overcome anything because we stand on the shoulders of some powerful people. So um, I thank everyone for their support for the Bennett issue, and I'm just glad to be a part of this illustrious organization and for it empowering me to be the woman that I am today. Thank you. Thank you to Neil. And we're going to go to Jackie and then Tiffany. I want to say thank you again, Dr. Sharon, for having us on this platform. I really you highlight um, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Um, without Delta, I do not know where I would be. Without Bennett, I do not know where I would be. And I am so grateful. I'm honored as a woman of God and a woman of Ben and a woman of Delta to stand on this platform. But most importantly, I just want to say, you know, if you keep God first and you trust God and know that God is going to show you the way in which you should go, I definitely want to say that um, I do want to also, again, shout out my line sisters, the 58 RACs. I definitely want to send a special shout out to our big sisters of the Omicron Delta um, especially um, Melanie Whitaker in her passing as well. She was a, a breast cancer survivor and then she, um, she has also passed. So I definitely want to give a shout out to her and her family and her line sisters as well. But most importantly, I want to give a shout out to Dr. Linda Hunt. She's also a member of um, pre PG alumni chapter. That was one of my mentors. Um, for in, in work, in human resources. So I definitely want to give a big shout out to her. And I want to give a shout out to, again, my sister, um, my sister in threefold, you know, this is my blood sister, my Delta sister, as well as my, um, my church sister, my church, in, my sister in Christ. So I just want to give a shout out because I think I would not have made it through a lot of things in life if I did not have her by my side. So I really appreciate um, being able to um, be the big sister, but even though she is like my big sister, even though she's the youngest. So I just want to say that I love her dearly and I love all of you guys. Um, without Delta, you know, we would not be where we are. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, I am so grateful that Delta chose me as well as I chose Delta. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you for allowing me to come on at the tail end. I definitely appreciate it. Once again, I'm bringing, bringing you greetings from Epsilon Iota Chapter, Ohio University. And <clears throat> when I just sit back and I think about all of the love that I have experienced during these almost 18 years um, from my big sisters, my, my sans, because that's what we call each other in the Midwest, as well as um, just other sorrows that I have met along the way. I'm truly grateful and thankful for this sisterhood. Um, there are many times when you like to reach out to people and you like to lean on people and just knowing that you have a sister somewhere, whether it's biological or um, from your sorority, it means a lot, you know. Um, I'm thankful for our big sister mentors that have paved the way and just given us that opportunity to be a part of this fold and to be a part of this bond because one of the things that was um, instilled in me as I was coming through my process is that only a few were chosen. And I remember that day, just as clear as day, as we're walking up our hill and they're singing that song to us. And only a few are chosen. So it takes a strong person to be a part of this sisterhood and it takes a strong, an even stronger person to live out the vision of the 22. So I'm thankful and I'm grateful. And I know that my sister had a big influence, a part of my 
joining the sorority as well. So I am, I'm just thankful all the way around. I'm thankful for the sisterhood. I'm thankful for you. I wish you all a wonderful 106th Founders Day <laughs> and keep living in the vision of the 22. Make every step that you take a tribute to them. Okay, Dr. Christy Mock, we're gonna go to you next. Oh, okay. So um, I think for me, I was thinking like, as I'm listening to everyone. So I want to, first of all, thank um, my sorrow and friend, Yvette artist, who actually told me about the line, right? So I was like, well, how did I even get there, <laughs> right? Um, and my best friend who supported me because she was a Delta at the time, and I, and I think what stood out for me is her actually pinning me um, at the ceremony. Um, I'm just thankful because I actually am the first person in my family to actually be a part of the Divine Nine. And when my nephew pledged, um, Kappa, it was just like this this thing. So I'm just glad to be a part of something that actually serves, that we have the sisterhood and we are all about building each other up. Um, I met Dr. Sharon at a networking event. Yes. Um, so for me, just I hear everything you all are saying. It has been hard for me to connect with a chapter because as soon as I left, I moved here. And then I moved twice since I've been here. So I've been in Fairfax and now I'm in Prince George. So it's like, even though I'm not necessarily a part of a chapter, I am financial, but I'm not a part of a chapter per se as far as being active. But I have met a lot of great women. And then I think just being a part of Delta, as you said, Dr. Sharon, membership does has its privileges. It has actually made this journey that I'm on to be even um more um, fulfilling. So I just want to say happy Founders Day to everybody. I hope to meet you all, connect with y'all in some form of capacity. Um, and some of y'all may see me at a chapter meeting. I don't know, <laughs> but I'm coming, but I'm coming. So thank you for your platform. I love it. Thank you, Dr. Wong and Dr. Denise Moore. Everyone's been saying, you know, it has been just a privilege to be a part of this amazing, amazing sorority. So again, thank you, Dr. Sharon, for this opportunity to be here with these amazing women. Um, I want to give a special shout out definitely to my line, you know, Friday the 13th and my chapter on Macronada. And a special, special shout out to my sister, my biological sister, Sherry. She's also a soror. I had the privilege of pinning her, you know, years later at the iPlay. So she's my sister's sister. And again, ladies, just has been a privilege and an honor to be up here with you guys today. Thank you so much. You know, this has just really inspired and motivated me to just want to be about service even more. So just thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Dr. Sephora Miller. Um, this is overwhelming. Dr. Sharon, first, I want to thank you because this gathering that you have for us has really uh, lit a fire in terms of, you know, connecting back about the sisterhood. And when I first saw it, I said, Delta take over. And I, I was, I am, I am humbled to be amongst great, great Deltas. Um, so thank you for doing this. Um, I want to give a shout out to one of my good friends, Tracy Adishigan. I met her over 20 years ago. And um, she really showed me, and when I first met her, I didn't know she was a Delta, we're still getting to know each other, but she really showed me what it really ex uh, exemplifies to be a Delta. I remember her giving me some advice one day, I was getting ready to leave the district that I was in because another district was giving us a signing bonus um, and a thousand dollars 20 years ago was a lot of money. And she looked at me and she said, you know what? I'm happy for you, you go. I'm gonna stay because if all the good teachers leave, who will be left for our children? Needless to say, I did not leave. And later on, I found out that she was a Delta and truly exemplifies, we think about everyone and having the best for every child. Um, so shout out to you, Tracy. Um, I wanna um, shout out to my line, um, RD122, rightfully determined 122. Um, 
And I also want to just kind of end with a really short um, experience that I had. In October of this year, you know, you talked about this, you know, being disconnected because of your grad school. Same thing happened to me. And I, I started to come back in, but it, it's not that easy, you know? Three years and then you come, it's not that easy. But I had gone to volunteer at my son's school because I'm, I'm part of the Morehouse Parents Association. Don't know anybody other than the parents who were we were volunteering with. And I got down to the campus and I had, you know, a shirt with uh, Delta paraphernalia, I had Delta paraphernalia on. And I could not, I was overwhelmed with the number of sorrows who came and said, hey, how you doing? Come to our tent. Hey, come, you know, but more importantly, you know, Spelman has a gathering over at their campus at a certain time. I think it's 3 p.m. And they would come by and say, make sure, they didn't know who I was, but the fact that I had my Delta paraphernalia, like make sure you had Spelman at 3 p.m. at such and such a place. And it was over and over. And when I went there, you know and I was right and I remember a story we go we gotta go you know and we don't know one another that is true sisterhood and I get over there and there's a sea of deltas from everywhere in the world um and it was just amazing so that true sisterhood is evident everywhere we go so thank you um and happy founders day Thank you, Dr. Miller. And Dr. Rowling, your last remarks. Um, providing this platform and uh, allowing um, me to join. Soros, it's been a pleasure spending the last hour with you and hearing about your stories um, about Delta and your journey into Delta and through Delta. Um, and it's been an honor to share the space with you. I guess as I leave, I'm just gonna be really quick and brief. I just wanna say happy Founders Day. Happy 106 um, to all my sorors and to my line sisters. Shout out to the city of 48, <laughs> spring 15, spring 04, 15 years. We're gonna celebrate where I'm on the planning committee. Help us, help us Jesus with <laughs> trying to plan some festivities for <laughs> the 48, all my line sisters, love them to death. Um, but happy 106 Founders Day to all my sorors and here's to 106 more. I love it, thank you. And Dr. Little, I mean, Ashley Little. Yes, I would like to say happy Founders Day again. And I would like to give some special shout out. First, special shout out to my chapter, Alpha Mu, as well as my line, Alpha Mu Spring 07 Hotel Redemption as well as being a part of a sisterhood of trailblazers that are about change has been awesome. And knowing this a lifetime and being able to, like I stated before, go anywhere in the world and know that I have a sister that has my back. Happy Founders Day, Star Wars. I love it, thank you. And I just wanna thank all of you because you know, when you have a vision and, and, and obstacles come like the snow, <laughs> You, we are resilient, that's one thing for sure, and we make a way out of no way. So I'm so grateful that you did hop on, even though we were planning for a wonderful studio taker, take over, you know, things happen for a reason. So I'm grateful that you still were a part of our virtual takeover. Thank you so much. And my shout outs, of course, go to my initiating chapter, Gamma Phi chapter, my line, Spring 90, it was 12 of us, Wild Kingdom, Thank you so much. Um, a special shout out to uh, my friend, Alandra Jones Spites, who actually is why I'm in Maryland today. She's actually in Texas now, but she was here while I was living in Charlotte and opened up her apartment for me to come in Maryland because I said I needed a change from North Carolina. Her and her roommate, they had an extra bedroom. She said, come find a job when you get here. That's sisterhood. So I am just so grateful for her. Thank you, Alandra. I love you. Um, also, I want to say thank you to five sorors, um, Dr. Don Williams, who is the Dean of School of Education at Howard University, Dr. Lisa Grio, who is my doctoral advisor, uh, and again, Dr. Carmen Rowland and Dr. Ashley Griffin, who were two of my professors in my doctoral program, and Dr. Eleanor White, who was a part of my school district, but also was instrumental in my doctoral program. Guys, I just wanna say thank you. Those of you who are not connected, find your local chapter. 
Get Connected. It is about sisterhood, scholarship, and service. And also a shout out to our illustrious 22 founders who knew that there was something better and took the leap to make it the difference. So guys, thank you so much. I love you all. Happy Founders Day to all the sorors out there. Everyone have a wonderful, wonderful Founders Day. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Love it. Y'all hang tight.